happy Easter, happy Passover, happy spring, happy renewal, happy everything day. Welcome, welcome, welcome to the Center for Spiritual Living here in beautiful San Clemente. We're so glad you're here with us in the sanctuary and out there in video land. So glad you're with us. And we'd like you to stand and sing with our song leaders this morning. We have the Wool Jijijijijiz and Rick Dale. And our song is Jennifer Russell's great tune, The Center of Creation. Center. I'm Reverend Carla Sharadis, and happy Easter to each one of you. A founder of Science of Mind, Ernest Holmes, said that Jesus was the most highly spiritual developed master that we've known here on earth. And today is an opportunity for us to embrace this auspicious day and to embrace those teachings that teaches us that today is a new day, that life is eternal, and we are all rising up. So welcome. Before we get started, does everybody have a flower? OK, great. If you don't, raise your hand, and Judy will bring one to you. Thank you, Reverend Judy. And we're going to start this morning with lighting the flames of faith. We promote this ceremony. We perform this ceremony to promote the universal consciousness of life, which acknowledges that all peoples, all faiths, all sentient beings come from one great universal presence, which we call spirit. Fundamental to this truth is the unifying nature of all religious thought, experience, which we honor here today. We light the candle for the Tao, honoring the universal path of harmony and equilibrium, the natural way. We light the candle for the shamanic traditions, honoring the beliefs, practices of all indigenous peoples the way of primal spirituality. We light the candle for Hinduism, honoring the path of knowledge, action, and devotion. We light the candle for Judaism, honoring the ethical path of living by sacred law. We light the candle for all forms of Buddhism, honoring the Four Noble Truths and the Path of Compassion. We light the candle for all forms of Christianity, honoring the Christ Consciousness as the Path of Love. We light the candle for all forms of Islam, honoring the Path of Compliance and the Will of God as the Highest Calling. We light the candle for the universalistic religion of Baha'i, 
honoring the path of unity and peace. We light the candle for all forms of new thought, honoring the metaphysical path of mental healing through the practice of universal spiritual principles. And as our practitioner this morning, Faith Mackey, lights the last candle, let it represent the path that brought you here this morning. And I'd like to invite Cheryl Lyman, our practitioner, to open us with our centering prayer. Thank you. Welcome, welcome, welcome. And in our beautiful, beautiful city on this beautiful day, I want you to join me in prayer. And this is what I know. This is what I know is true, that God is infinite peace, God is love, power, and harmony. There's only one life, one power, one divine energy, and that life is here always. I recognize the oneness that this same power, this same presence and infinite peace is also in me, through me, and around me as it is in all. I now claim that today's talk by Reverend Alice is not only heard by our ears, but in our hearts. And God supplies these needs as God is the source of what I am seeking. And I am so, so grateful for my awareness of this knowledge and knowing that God is a source of all good. And I release these words into the law, knowing the work has already been done. I let go and I let God, and so it is. And now, Today's affirmation, say it with me. Daily I rise in wonder, gratitude, power, and glory. And so it is. And our declaration of principles, I believe in God, the one creative intelligence, operating through the universe and operating throughout my entire being, now and always. I believe this perfect spirit operates on a law of mind and creates my experience exactly according to my belief. I believe this perfect creative intelligence can be used by me and by every other person to produce health, abundance, and love in mind, body, and total life experience. I use it now and I rejoice in it and so it is. Thank you, Cheryl. That was beautiful. And now we are absolutely delighted to bring you the jewels. The, the jewels, jewels of our center. The jewel choir. Welcome, welcome, welcome. So I'd like to introduce our singers as they're coming on up here. We have soprano section led by, here she goes, Miss Rita McPhail. <laughs> and then we have Tony and April, Jamie, Kathy Harris, a new member joining us, wave Kathy from the back. <laughs> Kimberly, Barbara, Rick, Wade, and Michael Garamoni doing double duty from soloist to choir singer. We're so grateful for every single one of you up here giving of your time, your talent to bless you all with music. Yeah. <laughs> So our first song, song is called Halle, 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 and Wade always says Halle Berry. No, it's, uh, it's Hallelujah. <laughs> and uh, Rita has a solo in the middle of this, so uh, everybody have fun. If you feel like snapping your fingers or dancing, you know, just go for it. Here we go. Thank you. 
sound it clear, sound it for the world to hear. Come make joyful music everywhere. amazing. Thank you so much. Let's give them another hand. <laughs> Happy Easter, everyone. I'm going to just adjust this a little higher. Wonderful. Thank you. Ah, oh, good morning. I'm so happy to be with you. For those of you that might be new here, uh, my name is Reverend Alice Reed, and I'm the spiritual director here. And if you are new here, we do have a special gift for you. So please see someone as you are leaving. We have a wonderful welcome packet. There's a, there's a little gift that you can take home with you, and so I hope you'll go ahead and make sure to avail yourself to that. How many he are, are here for the first time? Welcome. Thank you for joining us. We're really happy you're here with us. <laughs> wonderful. So this is a big weekend. It's a really big weekend. There's a lot going on. It's tax day. No, 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 no. That was another life. That was another life. I have great compassion for all my accountant friends who have to work through the weekend because they extended the deadline to April 18th. How dare they? We could have been done with this stuff on Friday. <laughs> um, no, it's a big weekend in the Judeo-Christian uh, traditions. Uh, Friday and Saturday were Passover and Seder dinners were happening all around the country and the world. And then, of course, today is Easter. And I, um, th the thing I, I really respect about both the uh, Jewish traditions and the Christian traditions is that they really do um, reflect each other. I mean, Jesus was actually Jewish, right? So, <laughs> so we have this, this deep steeping in that tradition of uh, the, the, that's practiced and commemorated year after year for the Jewish tradition, that celebration of the Eve before they were set free. And then when we look at the tradition of Easter, this too is a celebration of true freedom. It's the celebration of the resurrection. It's the celebration of the, the freedom that we were given an example of when the resurrection happened, when Jesus rose from the dead and proved that the death could, that did not have a hold on humanity. 
there's an interesting progression of the stories of Passover and the resurrection. And as the story goes, the, there was a, a time before the crucifixion and the resurrection called the transfiguration. And that was when Jesus went to go up into the mountains and to meditate with some of his followers. And they, it is said that he had this high holy moment where both Moses and Elijah appeared with Jesus. And so when I think about that, it's, it's, it gives me kind of goosebumps because Moses represents the law and faith. And Elijah, who was the protector of the Jewish people, he represents hope. And of course, Jesus represents love. He was the way shower to deep love and um, true transformation. So as we, as we um, look at Easter, I have kind of some fun facts for you. <laughs> it was Constantine who was a Roman Empire who ruled around 300 after the Common Era, and Constantine was actually born into the pagan religion at that time, and he was the first Roman emperor to convert to Christianity. And so he thought that it would be a really good idea if knowing that Ostera, which is the ancient pagan ritual of celebrating spring and the renewal, he thought that Easter, the celebration of the resurrection, should happen around the same time. <laughs> and so a lot of the things that we enjoy about Easter actually come from the deeper roots in humanity of, of paganism. And so, Mary, if you have that little slide for us. And so <laughs> I saw this meme, and here we have the Easter bunny on Freud's couch. I don't know where the eggs come from, and I don't know why I hide them. <laughs> well, let me give you a, a couple of clues. Um, rabbits in the pagan tradition represent that prolification of life, and eggs represent new beginnings. And so as we have adopted the Easter traditions, we have taken on these ancient practices and traditions. And so one of the things I want to share with you is that these holidays, we're all just making it up, right? <laughs> and and I, I say that kind of in jest, but the truth is that we are the one that ascribes meaning. We are the one that looks at what's been done before us, and we decide if it holds weight for us. We decide if there's something meaningful for us, and then we, can, we begin to internalize it. So in the, in the Centers for Spiritual Living, as you look at this um, teaching and this philosophy, I want you to think. I want you to feel for yourself. I want you to see what resonates with you so that you can bring in these traditions in a meaningful way. I love Easter. I love the idea of resurrection. It's that whole idea of starting anew and then really stepping into wholeness because that is what, re what is represented by that, the resurrection of the Christ, that that man was able to transcend his humanity and, Im and completely, um, I was going to say embody, but it's larger than that actually, completely know his wholeness and show us that death was no longer a limitation. It kind of sounds like our teaching, doesn't it? That we know that there's, we have these experiences in the world that are sometimes difficult, they're challenging, and yet we can transcend those limitations when we allow ourselves to be renewed. And so as I was saying to a friend the other day, I just love the resurrection. And she said, well, you know, you have to die first <laughs> before you can experience the resurrection. And isn't it true that I can't remember who the poet was who said we always die a thousand deaths, that we're always moving through these cycles in our life of, of death and rebirth, of loss and renewal, of, of letting go and releasing and then embracing and knowing that higher truth about ourselves. Hmm. The other thing that I really appreciate 
about the Easter story is the beautiful example, and I use that word very intentionally, the beautiful example, not the exception, the example that the Christ showed us. Here we have historically a man who loved his tradition, loved his practices, and wanted them to be available to everyone. So I would say that Jesus the man was probably the initiator of the movement of inclusive, inclusion in, in inclusivity. Absolutely, because he saw many of his people who were not even allowed in the temple because they didn't have enough money or because they were suffering from some kind of illness. And so he made sure that he could preach this wonderful good news about the indwelling spirit that lives in all of us to everyone. Now, you know, I've really been thinking about this, this whole story of the man, Jesus Christ, who then began to exemplify the power of the Christ consciousness that lives within us. And I, and I think that as we have evolved as humanity, we've had to really begin to slowly embrace this greater truth. It was a little too much <laughs> back 2,000 plus years ago. It was a little too much for people to begin to really embrace that that Christ consciousness lived within each one of us. And so we, we had what transpired as far as the mythos of the Easter story. Of course, he was, um, he was, Christ was put to death. And then he showed us by great example in that story that we could transcend death, we could transcend perceived sin, that none of that was truly real, but that the, the, the greater truth of who we are, the greater truth of who we are, always shines forth. So when you are moving through a challenge, when you're finding yourself in one of those thousand deaths that we all experience, it's helpful to either be in community where people can reflect back to you that there is something on the other side of whatever it is you're moving through, that you can, be, can lean on a strong spiritual practice that will carry you through. The other thing that um, comes forth for me as I look at this Easter holiday and this celebration of renewal is that, that this story in and of itself is not is an isolated story. It's a pattern. It's a pattern that we see in all life. Uh, now, I, now, I know we're in Southern California, and you don't really have that many changes this season. <laughs> But I spent, like, you know, most of my life on the East Coast and in the Midwest. And, and there we would have those winters. And in the winter we would, we would experience, you know, the bare wood of the trees as you would look out into the woods. And, and nothing, and the, the ground was cold, and it looked like nothing was ever going to come back. And then suddenly, suddenly, there would be this little buds on the bare wood and, and it almost seemed like all at once they would open up and life would begin again. And we have this pattern and this cycle that nature, the planet that we walk and live on, is forever reflecting back to us. That there is always an ending and a new beginning. There's always renewal. There's always something we can step into. And so as we, we stand here, it's April of 2022. We've been through quite an interesting two years. Many of us found ourselves two years ago shut in our homes, isolated from others, having to learn how to be in the world in a completely different way. And it's, it's really clear to me that things are opening up. It's time for renewal. And so my question to you or my invitation to you is how do you want to walk that out? How do you want to step into newness? So you, you see before you what looks like an empty dead vessel <laughs> of some sticks in it. And um, I want to invite you to, into a brief meditation practice and then if you, hopefully, if you don't have a, a, a bloom, 
Reverend Judy will make sure you get one, but everybody needs a flower because I'm going to invite us after the meditation to come forward. And as a symbol of our yes, we will be putting a flower in the vessel here. So let's, let's do this brief guided meditation first. So I invite you to get comfortable in your seats. And with your blossom in your hand, I invite you to lower your gaze or close your eyes and connect with your breath. And consider what is ready to be resurrected or renewed in your life. Where have you been playing small? What have you been holding on to tightly? Is there something in your life that is ready to spring forward? Maybe something deep within you that is calling you, calling you to open up. Today is your day to know that that wellspring that is the light and the love and the wholeness that already is inside of you is ready to be revealed. All you need to do is release, to let it go, to be willing to surrender. so that new life can come forward. And so as we take a moment of stillness, I invite you to simply ask your higher wisdom self, what is it that you're willing to let go of so that you can be part of a newness that already lives in you completely? What is it that your higher wisdom self is guiding you to embrace? So as you find yourself coming back to the place that you're in right now, feeling the seat beneath you, as I listened to Dave Friedman's talk a couple of weeks ago, and he said, say yes to the yes. So as a symbol of your saying yes to the yes, I invite us in a orderly fashion <laughs> to come forward and to, there's a floral um, brick here, and so I, you can just push your flower all the way down and place it in the vessel. And so when you're ready to say yes to that which wants to be revealed by you, I invite you to come forward with your blossom.
Wow. Wow. I, I, I so love the blossoming ceremony because it's such a beautiful uh, metaphorical and uh, tangible example of how when we come together, when we come together as community, we create something new and beautiful. That, that our beauty, we bring our beauty and our strength and our power to the, to the altar and we place it here with everyone else's and something new comes about. It is the true beauty of newness. And so let this be a representation for us of how we are rekindling our lives and allowing that power of resurrection to move through us. I have a, a wonderful quote from Ernest Holmes of what he has to say about Easter, and I invite you to take this in. He writes, Today the horizon is clear. The voyage starts anew. We are reborn. The true resurrection is not only from this life into the next. It takes place daily and hourly as we shed the limited concepts of life and come into the vineyard to gather the fruit of the Spirit, hanging rich from the vines of God. A person may be reborn, remade, and renewed in mind and body just through the taking of a little time to get acquainted with their better self, just through coming to recognize the invisible and almost unknown guest who accompanies everyone through life, the spiritual presence within. And so this Easter, my friends, I invite you to use this as a season for renewal in your own life. And continue to re we'll continue to remind you as you come here each week, as you take classes, as you join us for many of the activities that we do, so that we can reflect this powerful truth that there is no sin, sickness, or death. There is no limitation to our humanity when we allow ourselves to fully be present with our divinity. For that is the message that the Christ came to teach us. And all these many years ago, we're still trying to get it, aren't we? We're still trying to get it. So just breathe that in, and let's go ahead and go into prayer. And so I know in this moment as we have created this bounty of beauty and life before us, that it is truly representative of the power and the presence that lives within, within each one of us. It starts in that invisible realm where we can't see anything around us, where life doesn't look fruitful, where there's, there's something else that we're experiencing. And we come together in this place of community to reveal a greater truth. And so I know for each one here, both here in our sanctuary and out in the uh, video land and uh, watching us online, I know for everyone within the sound of my voice that that power and that presence and that wholeness that lives within each one is revealed this day as we release all that stands before us knowing that anything that is in the material realm is yesterday's idea. And so we hold true this highest idea of our greatest truth that we are indeed the second coming of Christ within each heart. And so I claim for each one free reign of true love and identity knowing the Christ in myself like I know the Christ in each one. And it has risen this day. I give great thanks for this. I know that this is a high, holy calling. I anchor this in love and surrender and power. And if you agree with me, please say, and so it is. Thank you, everyone. Thank you.
And now it's time to bring back our band and the Jewel Choir. Alice, thank you so much. Oh, what a gorgeous bouquet we all made there. That's just so beautiful. All right, we're going to share with you a song that's a Jennifer Russell song, and uh, you'll be familiar with it. It's a chant that she wrote called Holy Ground. And Reverend Alice asked us to do this, and so we made a choral arrangement, and here we go. <laughs> are going to stay up there because they're also going to sing for offertory. Perfect. 
the mic. <laughs> so it is time for our offertory. And I'd like to invite our ushers to come up to the stage. We're going to pass the baskets this morning. And this is our opportunity to give that which feeds us here on Sunday mornings, which feeds us during the week, which feeds us in classes and all the offerings. So we open your heart to be generous. And would you, would you repeat after me our offertory this morning? My offering is my acceptance of God as the source of my supply and symbolizes my faith in the abundant flow of this supply. Thank you. Carla, if we can take your microphone and pass that to Wade. Oops, we have two special little guest stars joining us on our offertory song. So Kai Noe and Emil, can you come on up? Yes, big hand for these guys joining us today. There we go. So some of you may remember a couple of years ago, before the world stopped, uh, Jamie's sons, the Kalama brothers, performed a couple of times for us. Well, this is the next generation of Kalama boys. <laughs> these are the children of Ryan Kalama and Jamie's grandsons. And Emil, wave your hand. And Kainoa, there we go. Yep. So they are joining us on this lovely little song called Build Our World on Love, which I thought was very appropriate for the peace that we need to keep spreading across to our brothers and sisters in Ukraine and for just all of us. So here we go. We're the children of all nations, the whole of days to come. We see the world around us, and the work is yet undone. We haven't gone yet to yet, but one day we're sure of. We'll build a little room because we'll build it on love. We dreams of peace and friendship. Open your heart, sing away songs, sing about love, show people we care. With a people of all nations, the hope of days to come, we'll see the world around us and the work as yet undone. We haven't all the answers yet, but one thing we're sure of. and 
Uh, thank you so much, guys. And my Jewel Tones Choir. And together, we're building a better world, aren't we? It was beautiful. Just beautiful. It is time for our acknowledgments, and I'd first like to just acknowledge everyone that came together to bring this music program, the Jewel Tone Choir. Beautiful. Let's give them another round of applause. Our music director, Diane Van King, her amazing, amazing band. Let's give them a big, big hand. They make every single Sunday so engaging and beautiful for us. And all of you that have been in service this week, could you please stand for us? Let us just give you some love and a big, big acknowledgement. All of those that are standing are what makes this center tick each and every Sunday and in between. So thank you all. And with our practitioners that are in service today, please stand. Our practitioners are trained in the art of prayer. And they're here to gift you today with a gift. Today we have Cheryl Lineman, we have Paula Manis, and we have Faith Mackey hiding somewhere. And they'll be available to you right after our service. We have two prayer tables in the back and also our quiet room. So please take advantage of this beautiful gift and get a prayer. And now it's time for our invitations, Rick. I cordially invite you. A reminder to RSVP for Reverend Alice's installation ceremony on Friday, May 6th. Don't miss it. Game night this month is Friday, April 29th. The game, the name of the game, and the game of the name is Bunko. Calling all Bunko players, please sign up on the kiosk. Please stay for Conscious Connection after the service today for a small group discussion about the topic of today's message. And remember our ongoing weekly small groups meeting by Zoom, the book study on Wednesday mornings, Shifting Sands on Thursday mornings, and coming home to spirit on Friday mornings. For more information about these groups, there is a flyer on the table in the foyer. And now, he has risen so you can rise too and sing. <laughs> Let there be peace, I am a stand for peace. Let there be love, I am a stand for love. Let So I know as we move, go forth today, as we move through this day and this week, that we are indeed making a new world. I give great thanks for this. And so it is. So it is. Please take flowers with you. Help yourself. There's more in the foyer. Help yourself take some flowers home with you. 